Hi, again. I'm back here with Dale in the shop doing some recaps for the past couple of months. Got lots of video to edit together, but, uh, you know, need to make a cohesive story for you, the viewer. All maybe 15... Oh, sh oh no, it's not just 12 of you anymore. We broke 400 subscribers. <laughs> Outside Inside Outside Racing has over 400 subscribers. Like... If all 400 of you actually watched every video I made, 400 views, woo! I mean, we'd be right up there with, you know, children who are filming themselves playing in a sandbox, you know? So, hey, thank you so much for subscribing. Um, tell your friends, would you please? I don't want to have a real job. I want to, you know, I want to be one of these people who does this for a living. This. Maybe better. Maybe I'll do it better if I do it for a little. I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure the rest of the guys would appreciate it as well. We've got a whole slew of people in our little stable of fans of Toyotas um, that uh, can bring you really awesome cars for really cool content. And, you know, racing, action, driving, just looking cool next to a car. You know what I'm saying? With our filthy clothing. I should wash this thing. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you're already subscribed, go ahead and click that bell and then get some notifications on your phone whenever we got new content. I'm gonna try to put out stuff every Friday uh, from here on out. Uh, at least for a little while, I've got a lot of good, like I say, Dale content coming out. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll get out and we'll get more content on the other guys' cars, uh, you know, coming up soon as well. And trying to get ahead of the schedule so I can put out videos and schedule them to come out. You know, I mean, there's a whole thing to do. Uh, let's get on with this one. And then that won't invade, you know, any more of my day. And I don't want to take up any more of your time. So let's, let's get this moving. So, Dale needed a valve adjustment. And valves can be some tricky little doubles. You think you've got them gapped right and everything's 100%, and turns out you did it entirely wrong. You don't even know where top dead center is. Maybe you don't even know what the firing order is. That could happen too. I didn't ever claim to be a mechanic, and I didn't tell you to watch me from, you know, mechanical tips and advice. You're just watching me get a car ready to go racing and then racing it. That's it. That's it. And if I get it ready wrong, then that'll that'll probably prove itself when I go racing. So as far as the valve adjustments, you know, there's manuals you could read. They'd tell you how to do it. We did a little of that and used a little bit of the internet and then did a lot of trial and error. And eventually we were able to get the valves adjusted properly. But you know what? They're still clattery. They're, they're old. Like they just don't make, they don't make good noises. Do a little valve job here, best as we can. Or, uh... I'm not sure that we did uh, the previous ones right. We know we got this one right, so we're gonna go back and do the rest of them. You gonna hold it like that? I'll do it like this. Nope, we moved it a little. That got tighter. And this is a intake, right? And it was oh oh eight. Oh wait, you had the fourteen on the previous one, right? Yep. Okay, oh just God. making sure. You may want to set them a little bit slack. Yeah. So that way, when we do this, we end up with that final tighten. There we go. That one looks good. I don't think she moved. Time is of the essence here because, um, you know, it's got to be hot. So say if we got it. And she's still pretty hot right now. Get me struggling to turn this crank because now we got to, once again, watch it and see which one. So we got three that we just did. We should be back to one again, right? Uh, four. four. We haven't done four. Yeah, we didn't do four, but we already passed it. Yeah. So we're going to be back to one again, and we're going to start all over. Right? Yeah, that should be fun. But should two be at the bang point right now? What is the firing order? All right. Well, you, I mean, you look at them. Don't they look adjusted? Because we did it. We adjusted them. And now there's a bunch of RTV that we got to clean up. And then I guess I got to get more RTV, because what I did not get is a new gasket for that valve cover. Maybe I ought to just order a new valve cover gasket. I'll see if I can get that in any kind of short order, but I don't really want to wait around a week on it. Uh, but maybe we can get one in a couple of days. Other than that, I wish you could smell what we got in here because it's, um, I think it's half gas at this point. At least. At least half gas. So it smells real bad. Um, 
and it's probably I mean like this is this is probably just it coming out from the crankcase it's probably that full no that's not but you know what I mean it's it's probably way over full it's got a lot of gas in it we got some sort of issue going on with the carb where um, you can see it right there uh, that the the that is the idle screw and it doesn't even touch the throttle um, plate thingy and it idles at like 1500. So I think we've got a vacuum leak or something's going on. This, this motor is bound to not be in here anymore anyway. So let's just clean off. We'll clean off both surfaces. We'll clean off the gasket as good as we can. RTV everything back again with, I guess, blue RTV because that's what's on there, right? Well, why not? I mean, it'll come off that way. Um, and then it's either blue or red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll figure that out. But yeah, for now, we're going to button it up because it's late, and we're going to call this, um, you know, I guess, job done. We're waiting on a new Wix filter and uh, an oil anyway, so we really can't do the, the remainder of the work here until we get stuff. So I guess I'll just order more stuff, and then we'll keep going. I'm kind of playing around with a carburetor here on Dale, and... Uh, and he's flipped over at the moment. Let's flip him back over. This is the, the piece that has been in question for a while. My throttle's been sitting open like this, and I didn't understand why. And uh, I just found, you know, followed mechanically the, the screws, that all the screws that I can adjust. And um, I found this one. Where'd it go? This guy over here on the choke side, it was dialed, like, all the way in. And that was keeping the the uh the throttle from coming to rest on the idle screw so now uh i should be able to get a lower idle and actually tune it with the idle screw pretty simple things really um when it comes down to it but we also you know took off the the throttle plate or, or loosened the throttle plate a little bit and made sure that it was centered so it's got a good gap on it now i, I think this is going to work a lot better now but i don't i still don't know about the fuel dumping issue um, we may have a we may have a, a needle and seat issue, so I might need to take this apart real quick and check out the uh, the float and the needle and just make sure everything's looking okay. This will be hard to do with one hand, but well, I kind of do it. Blocking the light there, though. I mean, you can't you can't see it at all, but everything's moving free. There's no debris in the way. Um, Float, needle, seat. I mean, you can't see the seat. I guess you got to take stuff apart to see the seat. I don't know anything about that. So I'm just going to put it all back together and see if it dumps fuel again. I think we might be better now. We've got only three PSI running to the carb, and um, we're not going to be choked all the time, so that'll be good. First shot back at it here, and we got a much, much, much better idle. It's creeping up a little bit. It started at 800. It's coming up in temperature getting up to about a thousand but I bet you right now that I can turn this idle screw and it'll do something. Can't get it on there like that. Oh there it goes. Maybe I can just push it down. There we go. Hear that? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh yeah. What do we got? We're still about a thousand. Let's get it back off a little more. Hit it real quick.
with the two and a half turns out to begin with. down in the carburetor. So before, instead of a nice even spray, we were getting a uh, pretty harsh dump down in the carburetor. I need to know if this is a dribble or a spray. I can't really tell. Maybe you won't be able to either. It looks like a spray to me from both of them. <laughs> Oh, now you can hear me. Uh, I'm real happy. Dale over here, that's his hood. Um, he's running a lot better now that I figured out the choke adjustment on the carburetor was what was causing all of the uh, dribbling of the fuel and the not closing of the throttle plate. So good. I'm so dumb, you know. But my mistakes, you should learn from them. So... You know, if you mess with that choke adjuster, don't dial it all the way in, number one. And if and if your throttle um, rests, uh, d doesn't come to rest on the idle adjustment screw, then you've got your choke adjusted too high. So back her off a little bit. And, uh, you know, you'll have a much better running motor. So we were running on choke the whole time. That's why it's got a bunch of gas in the oil. Pretty simple. I mean, that that wasn't the problem with the old carburetor. I don't think. I think the old carburetor was suffering from too much fuel pressure. What I've read was that the mechanical fuel pump over there, um, it's supposed to put out like 7 to 8 PSI for the old uh, Toyota carburetor that would go on here. But these want 3 to 4 PSI. So I put on one fuel pressure regulator and, you know, wasn't convinced that it was working. Then I got uh, this one from Ryan that I had tried before, has a gauge on it. That gauge is reading right at three and a half PSI, no matter what I do. If I dial it up, if I dial it down uh, on the pressure regulator, three and a half. I think three and a half is coming out of the mechanical pump. That's what I think. Uh, but what I know is that this is running much better now, and except for little valve train noise from the front of the house up here. So we're gonna do the valves again, uh, all of our numbers and, uh, and uh, you know, specifications are still here on the, on the windshield. So we still know what we're doing. We'll run through them again, make sure we have less clicky clacky. We're waiting on oil and, uh, and a filter. I can't find a Wix filter anywhere for this car. I need to order a case of them. And the oil that I want is this business. The uh, Castrol GTX Classic uh, with the with the zinc in it. Uh, they are not a sponsor. I wish they would be. Boy, send me a bunch of this. You know, I'd love to have it on hand because um, pretty much everything that I own should, well, you know, besides modern vehicles, this is good for classic vehicles, right? It's got the high zinc content that oil used to have uh, to help your valves and. Uh, you know, stuff. I don't know. I don't know what it does, but it's good for you. And it's, you know, 2050, so it's nice and thick. It's like uh, pudding, no, motor pudding. 
So right now, you know, our oil pressure is real low because we got gas in the oil. Um, but once we do the valves and then we get the new uh, thick oil in it, new filter, these numbers should improve. These are our compression numbers. From relatively, we did this cold. We didn't do this hot, so we messed up there, but they should be higher than this cold. I think hot, they're probably only gonna raise about 15 or so with the current oil that's in there, but we put that good thick oil in, we have our valves adjusted right, we may see 160s, 150s, 160s. That's, you know, fingers crossed, that's what I'm hoping for, is uh, 150s, 160s out of that. I don't know. Get, what, what are you doing? Why are you standing on the interior? You shouldn't be standing on that door card. Don't stand on that. Back home. You got the long nails. With the long nails, you scratch up the beautiful interior. But I'm I'm glad you're hanging out. Yeah, you good boy. I'm Sam. That's it for the valve adjustment. Now, now that the, the valves are adjusted and the carb is running right, this this just strengthened my belief that Dale was indeed ready for the 2023 Lake Garnett Grand Prix Revival. With the Ford 88 rear end in place and the motor running good, uh, transmission shifting smoothly, no reason to believe that Dale couldn't perform in the 80 mile per hour class at the Garnett Grand Prix track event. Um, and, and then also do the autocross, like he was ready, absolutely ready. One issue did remain though, and that was the turning, oh no, and also the stopping, stopping would be good when it's going. And then maybe the, you know, the suspension could be better-ish. The rear's good. Front, though, not so much. So that's our next stop on the tour. Join me next time when I'll be putting front coilover suspension from Techno Toy Tuning onto Dale, along with their mini big brake kit with four pot Willwood calipers, and getting an alignment, which... You know, to try to do yourself, well, you'll see. It's not as easy as I thought. That's it. See you later. Here I go. Oh, boy. It's dark over here. Where am I? Oh, oh look at all my tires. I don't visit you guys enough. Oh, Hoosiers. Someday, Hoosiers. Someday. Someday.